So you know that company that was in the news a couple of years ago for buying the rights of almost everybody? Justin Bieber, Shakira, Beyonce, Neil Young, Fleetwood Mac, and Red Hot Chili Peppers. It goes by the name Hypnosis, and it's recently had an unfortunate bout of bad luck. In this video, we're diving into the fascinating story of Hypnosis, a company that sought to great heights in the music industry, but also faced significant challenges. Hypnosis, founded in 2018 by former artist manager Merck Mercuriadis, set out with a bold vision to transform music royalties into a valuable investment class. He aimed to revolutionize how the music industry valued its assets. I know this sounds like one big cringe marketing pitch, but believe me, this was actually the company's angle. They were really going for the whole, look at me, I'm a vanguard slash disruptor image. And in fairness, it worked. The company's strategy was simple, yet groundbreaking raise money from investors, acquire the rights to songs and catalogues from prominent artists, and receive steady royalty income from the acquired catalogues. This model promised not only to preserve music history, but also offered to investors a slice of the lucrative music revenue pie. This is a very important point. Prior to hypnosis, an individual who may have been interested in acquiring music rights would have negotiated deals directly with artists, management, and other music companies or via platforms like the Royalty Exchange. I've discussed this topic in another video, which you can find here. In essence, hypnosis sought to open music royalty investing to the investing public via its vehicle, Hypnosis Songs Fund. And it was successful in doing so. In a short span, Hypnosis made headlines with acquisitions of catalogues from artists like Justin Bieber, Neil Young, Shakira, Fleetwood Mac, and even parts of the Red Hot Chili Peppers catalogue. By 2020, Hypnosis had amassed a portfolio of over 60,000 songs, becoming one of the largest music rights holders globally. At its peak, Hypnosis's market value soared. Investors were drawn to the stability of music royalties, especially during uncertain times like the COVID-19 pandemic. The company's stock on the London Stock Exchange performed impressively, reflecting growing confidence in its business model. Hypnosis also prided itself on supporting artists, ensuring they received fair compensation for their work. This approach endeared the company to the music community and strengthened its brand reputation. Merck can even be seen saying here that the firm will aim to preserve an artist's legacy. But most songwriters tend to view their children as songs as well. So we are safe custodians for those songs going forward um, in terms of ensuring that they maintain their value, that the writer's, the writer's legacy, legacy, that the artist's, artist's legacy, legacy is legacy maintained legacy as, well. as well. Given the current state of affairs though, we have to ask ourselves whether this remains to be true. But we'll get to that later, so stick around. Now, as with many rises, Hypnosis faced its share of challenges. Questions arose about the sustainability of its business model, particularly regarding the high prices paid for song catalogues. Questions about the company's acquisition strategy were also asked. Were such hefty prices being paid to improve Merck's relationships with the artist community? Were they being paid to gain critical mass and wipe out the competition? And given where other market participants were valuing catalog, was the valuation methodology employed by Hypnosis a prudent one? Critics also argued that the company was over leveraged and might struggle to generate returns to justify making its sizable investments. Moreover, the complexities of managing such a vast portfolio started to become apparent just four years after Hypnosis' inception. Going back to 2022, financial struggles began to surface. Hypnosis faced difficulties in meeting investor expectations, and its stock value started to decline. The company's aggressive acquisition strategy, initially seen as a strength, now appeared as a potential risk factor. Market analysts and investors grew wary of the long-term viability of its model. The company's debt levels also raised alarm bells. Maintaining cash flow to cover these obligations, especially with fluctuating royalty income, became a significant concern. Hypnosis had to navigate these financial hurdles while maintaining the trust of its investors and the music community. In September 2023, due to rising interest rates, the Hypnosis Songs Fund was struggling economically and announced to shareholders that it would sell a total of 29 song catalogues, including those of Barry Manilow, Shakira, L.A. Reid and the Kaiser Chiefs to the Blackstone-financed Hypnosis Songs Capital for a total of $440 million. Now for context, Hypnosis Songs Capital is a partnership with private equity firm Blackstone and Hypnosis Songs Management, the publicly traded fund's advisor. For clarity, 
please reference this diagram. Because of this, leadership were accused of cherry picking assets and once again, question marks were raised about leadership's alignment, which persists to this day. As you can see, there was a clear conflict of interest and it didn't appear as though management had investors' best interests at heart. The shareholders meeting in October 2023 rejected the sale proposal by a large majority and appointed a new board to either completely restructure or dissolve the listed company within six months. Then it was announced in December 2023 that Hypnosis has sold 20,000 selected songs to an undisclosed buyer for $23.1 million, a far cry from the nearly half a billion dollars previously desired. In an effort to stabilize, the company's decision to sell parts of its catalog and restructure its operations were deemed necessary although it marked a stark contrast to the previous growth strategy. In March of 2024, it was announced that Hypnosis's asset value had been written down by a quarter, which further substantiated previous claims of the firm overvaluing assets. At present, there's a bidding war between Blackstone and Concord to acquire the rights of the fund, which Blackstone are currently in pole position to win. This, in essence, means that all the talk about safeguarding artists' legacy was nothing more than hyperbole in an attempt to get artists comfortable with selling their rights. The fall of hypnosis serves as a cautionary tale about the balance between rapid growth and prudent business management. While the company's vision of monetizing music rights was revolutionary, the execution faced unforeseen challenges that ultimately hindered its long-term success. This is not to say, however, that the concept of a publicly traded music rights acquisition vehicle doesn't work. In fact, this might serve as the perfect learning opportunity for any aspiring funds on exactly what not to do. Hypnosis' story is a compelling chapter in the history of the music business. It highlights the potential and pitfalls of treating music as an investment and underscores the importance of strategic foresight in business. As the music industry continues to evolve, the lessons learned from hypnosis will undoubtedly shape the future endeavors in music rights management, especially for those with aspirations of creating publicly traded vehicles. As this video illustrates, hypnosis suffered from a combination of overpaying for music catalog, being too levered and bad management. As always, thank you for watching. If you found this video interesting, make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more on the music business. Until next time, peace.